Okay, going on to 6. The net force acting on a body is 0. Is zero. Which of the following quantities must also have 0 magnitude for this body? Okay, so we have our formula, obviously, F is equal to ma. We've got Newton's first law. Uh, it's obviously got to be d because the momentum, it could have a momentum, it could have a constant velocity. So it would have a momentum, it could have a velocity, it could have a speed. All of these, if these are constant, there is no unbalanced force acting uh, on it. But it could certainly have, a, have an actual value for this. But if there is zero net force, according to this formula, there's, this is zero, therefore this must also be zero. The acceleration must be zero. So that would be D. Okay, so there we are, six. Let's go on now to seven. Going on to seven. And we have this formula over here, this one over here. So we have a constant force of magnitude F acts on a body. So it's a constant force, magnitude F acts on a body. The graph shows the variation with time of the momentum of the body. Uh, the magnitude of the force is given by. Now, obviously we've got uh, the momentum is changing. We've got a changing momentum. It's starting at zero. Uh, it's going up to 200 and the time is changing. Now, hopefully when you hit it, changing momentum time, you would think of this formula over here, that the force times the change of time is equal to the change in momentum. So, if I wanted to work out the force, I would have the change in P, the change in momentum over the change in time, which is the slope of this graph, is it not? The slope of this graph, because there we have the change in momentum over the change in time. Change in P, change in T. So I'm going to have, therefore, that the change in P, if I take the whole graph, will be 200. Uh, the change in T will be 10. So I'll have 20 newtons would come out there. So we are with C. Fine, going on to, let's go on to the next one here. Going on to 8. All right, looking at this and over here, 8. So we have a block on a frictionless horizontal table is attached by a light inextensible, inextensible string. As I've said before, that means it doesn't stretch to an object P of mass M that hangs vertically as shown below. The pulley has zero friction, zero friction and the acceleration of free fall is G. The acceleration of the block of the object P is. All right, so what is that going to be? Well, when when looking at this, this string over here is making, is connecting these two things. So the magnitude of the acceleration, if this has got a ma an acceleration that, the magnitude of the acceleration of both P and M, I'm just talking about the magnitude, not the direction, the magnitude of A uh, for, for M, uh, is also going to be for P. Both of those are going to have the same magnitude because they're connected by that string. Now, we have this acting on here is MG and this, the force acting down there of big MG would be cancelled out by the reaction force. So there's actually zero force except for this force which comes from this mg. So this is the only resultant force that is acting on both. So the resultant force is mg and it's accelerating both masses. So we would get mg divided by m plus m would equal a. So we would get um, this one over here. C would be your correct answer for that one over there. Going on to your next question, question 9. Question 9, going on to the next one. Um, 
two objects collide in inelast inelastically um, you need to know what this means inelastically uh, for this for this system of two objects only the momentum is conserved a kinetic energy if its kinetic energy is conserved this would be an elastic collision um, so in an inelastic collision only momentum is conserved you need to need to know that all right that's nine and then I think I'll finish off this section uh, with 10 let's have a look at 10 so we have an object of weight 50 Newtons is dragged up an inclined slope plane at a constant speed through a vertical height of 12 meters the total work done is 1500 joules um, the work done against friction all right well in dragging this up you have raised the vertical height by 12 meters so your potential energy increase is going to be mgh this mg is the 50 newtons so it would be ep is equal to 50 times by the height which is 12 so we've got 600 newtons so 600 newtons has been done to increase the potential energy now the rest must be to overcome friction and that's 1500 so it must be 900 joules um, that uh, that gets done that is used for friction um, we won't worry about 11 um, the the answer for this is actually a but we'll discuss this in the next unit that's actually not so in the next one I'll continue from number 12 okay thank you very much